Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. What is the location? Walk away from there, okay? Hello, and welcome back to Stolen From Me. Now, this episode come with numerous different triggers. The triggers are stalking, murder, domestic abuse, and an eating disorder. I mean no harm by this episode, and if you are triggered by any of the previous mentioned, I have different videos on my page that you can look at. I don't want to cause any stress at all. So all the information I have, I found in two documentaries. I had various different newspaper articles. The Kent police actually wrote quite a lot online about this case and I read a transcript from the court. So I believe all the information to be true. This is the case of Molly McLaren. Molly was 23 years old when she was murdered. She was stabbed 75 times inside her own car by her stalker ex-boyfriend. Molly had her whole life in front of her. She was a grade A student at the University of Kent and she was actually predicted to achieve a first class honours degree. She had her sights firmly set on becoming a fitness instructor. She was dedicated to fitness and she started her own blog, posting fitness tips, healthy foods and motivational fitness videos. She had such a positive outlook on life and her blog that this was a very successful social media post. Molly had a good group of friends around her at uni. They supported each other and as Molly became closer with them, they started to confide in each other. Molly also worked as head baker and she met a girl called Amy. It's believed that Amy was actually Molly's best friend. Amy described Molly as someone who always had a smile on her face and was the joker of the group. Molly battled bulimia. She also had anxiety but she had it under control with the help of fitness and her friends and family. Amy, Jennifer and Amelia. Jennifer was also battling an eating disorder and this created a bond between the two. Summer break came and everyone got to relax. Molly had worked so hard at uni. Molly found someone on a dating site who she thought would be a great match. So she swiped right. Joshua Stimpson was 25. He lived just a few miles up the road from Molly and they seemed to get on really well. They spoke online for a couple of months before they even met. Then they finally met in November. Molly seemed happy with Stimpson. They spent a lot of time together and they even had a love for fitness. Things were going really well. This was Molly's first serious relationship and they spent a lot of time together. Stimpson opened up to Molly about his problems and what he'd been through. He said that he had anxiety and depression and this just brought them both closer. They thought that they could actually help each other through the harder times. But Stimpson wasn't all what he seemed to be. He did have depression and he had it from a young child. His parents split up when he was around 12 years old and his mother had left the family home. Stimpson was brought up by his dad. What Molly didn't really know is that he had a dark side and his previous relationships really didn't end well. Molly was unaware of this. Summer break was about to be over and she had to head back to uni. This is where she introduced him to her friend Amelia. Amelia was her close friend and workout partner. But this meeting didn't really go well either. Stimpson had actually showed control and behaviour. They all went to the gym, but as the time went on, he decided that he wanted to become in between Molly and her friend. Now, he made it clear that if he wasn't with Molly, then no one else was going to be. So he even turned up at study groups. He would inundate her with texts and WhatsApps. And if this didn't work, it'd just turn up. This began to make Molly feel uneasy and she decided that she needed a break from him. She was young and she had uni and her friends and his behaviour wasn't helping her at all. Molly texted him saying, We can't be together 24-7. 
I feel pressured. But this really didn't help the situation and he began to argue. He wasn't going to walk away from Molly at all. Molly again started to question herself. She knew she loved him, but she just didn't really like his behaviour at all. Molly decided to end the relationship, but Stimson repeatedly texted her untolds of times. He just didn't stop. He begged her and begged her and begged her to keep him. He had a hypersensitivity to being rejected and this was starting to show. Molly's friends just said, just ignore him, but Molly was questioning her decision. He had one goal in mind. He wanted to actually isolate Molly from her friends at the time. But I believe that this would have never have happened because her friends was a solid group of friends. So in April... Molly and her mum and Stimson and Molly's dad, I believe, all went to a hotel and stayed there. I think Stimson was actually in a race or something and they went to watch. So Molly's mum heard him arguing and she wondered what was going on. So she asked Molly what is going on. She said that Stimson was recording her and videoing her without her permission. Now, I don't know what was done with that, but I would have done something. But May came along and Molly decided that this was the make or break of their relationship. So they booked a holiday to Tenerife. When they got there, anything and everything Molly said, now Stimson just wouldn't listen to her. He wouldn't take anything she said in and Molly was having a terrible time. She reached out to her friends and family back home and said that she was having an awful time and she wanted to come home and she sent a text saying, help me. Molly couldn't wait to get home. She had a plan to end the relationship once she actually got back home. But this didn't happen straight away. On the 17th of June, Molly was out with her friends celebrating. I think that was her birthday, but I don't know if that was her birthday on the 17th. Stimson was actually with them as well. And Molly's birthday celebrations wasn't going really too well. Stimson had started an argument with the two. And Molly actually told him that it's over. He became aggressive and shouted really loud inside the pub. She broke up with me as he walked out. Stimson had reached out to Molly online, but she didn't want to talk to him, so she actually blocked him. This infuriated Stimson. He took to social media, especially Facebook, and he tried to publicly humiliate her. He tagged her friends and family in different posts. Now, Stimson actually turned his sights to something what was really important to Molly, and that was her fitness blog. He wrote on her fitness blog that she was doing cocaine, and he actually included in a tag her mum and dad and her friends. Molly was devastated. She did it. She did what you should do, and she kept her screenshots of what he'd put online. Now, Stimson couldn't get a reaction as everyone started to block him more and more. So he moved to WhatsApp. Now, WhatsApp, I think if you block someone on your phone, I think WhatsApp is completely separate. So I think you have to block them on WhatsApp as well. Because if you don't, they can still reach you even though they're blocked on your phone. I think that's how it works. So... Molly reached out to her friends and family and said that she thought that Stimson was becoming more and more nasty and she was frightened. She said that she was scared of him and she thought he might hurt her. Her parents were going away and he actually knew this information. Now, her friends started to see this more and more. On the 22nd of June, Molly and her mother go to the police station and give evidence of all the information that um, Stimson had been doing. So they all had screenshots and everything. And the police actually spoke to Stimson and said that, you know, you've got to leave her alone and take all these posts down. Now, the police officer said, we ain't going to talk again, are we? And Stimson replied to the police officer, aren't we? Stimson's behaviour became more aggressive and it's now starting to become more worrying and Molly's mother actually printed out loads of photographs of him 
and handed him around the streets where she lived just in case he came around the area. On the 23rd of June, Stimson was spoke to by the police again about his behaviour. It's believed that the police was involved with Molly and Stimson in a week-long investigation, say from the time that they split up to the time that Molly had died. Stimson's next move was very calculated. He finished work early and headed to Asda. He went and bought a Sabatier paring knife. He also went to home base and brought a pickaxe and kept him in the back of his car. He was very, very calculated. He made friends with a girl who made friends with Molly. He couldn't get close to her friends or her or her family because he had been blocked by everyone. So he decided to befriend this girl who befriended Molly and this girl would then feed back information about Molly. I don't know if this girl was fully aware of what she was actually doing. June the 28th. Now Molly posted up that she was going to have a night out. She was going out to a pub to have drinks with her friends. As Molly and her friends were celebrating in the pub, in walked Stimson with another girl. Molly stated that she looked at him and knew that she didn't love him anymore because she wasn't jealous one bit. Although it did make her kind of uneasy because why would he just show up there? He made his presence really clear by walking past her numerous times. Now he walked past her to get out of the door even though there was another exit there. 20 minutes later, Molly actually left and she got in her car and drove home. She wanted to head home because she wanted to watch Love Island. Unaware the whole time that actually Stimson was driving behind her. Now Amy, her friends, did say that no one walked her to the car because he was with some other girl and he'd already left 20 minutes beforehand so everyone believed that everything was fine. They didn't actually know that he was actually stalking her. Now the next day Molly got up and got in her car and drove to the gym. She was all ready to record another fitness workout for her blog. She was completely filled but fueled by coffee she said. Now she was unaware again that Stimson was actually following her again. This was the 29th of June. Molly pulled up at the gym around 10am and was ready for a day. About 10 minutes later, Stimson pulled up in the car park and he made his way up the stairs. You can clearly see on CCTV that he walks up the stairs with, I think it's a bottle of water, and then he stops. And then he turns around and walks back down the stairs. And then he stops and he walks back up into the gym where Molly is working out. He gets his mat and he lays next to Molly about five foot apart. Now Molly is busy working out and she doesn't actually notice him at first. It's not until that she stops, looks over and thinks, oh, it's him. So she walks over to her phone, take a picture of him and send it to her friend Amy. And was like, look, it's just turned up at the gym next to me. Now you can clearly see that she walks over to Stimson working out and she asked him, why aren't you at work? And he replied, it's none of your business. Molly continued to text her friend Amy. She's frightened. He was at the pub last night and now he's here. She can't seem to get away from him. When Stimson actually gets up, he decided to just get up and leave all of a sudden. He's seen on CCTV walking out. Molly is panicked. She texts her friend Amy again. She calls her mum as well. Both give the same advice. Get home. Be safe. As Molly is leaving the gym... She is unaware that Stimson is circling the car park waiting for Molly. Molly texts Amy and sends her final message that she's walking to the car. She also says she always have to look over her fucking shoulder. Amy replies, don't worry about him, he's a psycho. As Molly gets into her car, all of a sudden Stimson jumps in the car. 11.08 he stabs Molly 75 times and slices her throat. Molly died at the scene. A witness, Benjamin Norton, he saw Stimson and he also saw 
Molly, he thought they were arguing at first because he saw Molly had her hands up. But then he saw something was actually in Stimson's hand. Benjamin walks over to the car. He bangs on the bonnet. He tries to get Stimson's attention, but he was completely focused on Molly. He then walks around the side of the car where Stimson is. He's kneeling half out of the passenger seat. So Benjamin starts to grab the door and slam it into Stimson's leg. Stimson, don't move. Then Benjamin see Molly. He knew it was too late. Stimson was trying to slice Molly's throat. Now, Stimson was actually found in the car park by police, covered in blood. He didn't try to run, and police made arrests. On the 23rd of January 2018, at the trial at Maidstone Crown Court, Stimson actually pleaded manslaughter on the grounds of diminished responsibility. At the trial of his previous encounters with women, uh, they all came to light and it actually said that one woman he dated for one day came forward and said that he harassed her with numerous texts. He slashed her mum's tyres and he believed that he created or caused abuse and vandalism. Police was actually aware of this incident. Another woman came forward saying that she was on holiday and he messaged her saying that he will fly out there and drown her. And he also stated that if she ever touches his family, he'll stab her. Even though there's no mention of the family ever taking place. And just before he started to talk to Molly, he actually was talking to another girl who he actually was harassing as well. And he threatened her and he spat in her face. A repeat pattern of stalking and abusive behaviour is developing. Dr. Olof explained at Maidstone Crown Court that Molly would have lost consciousness within seconds. Now the jury came back after four hours with a verdict. They convicted Stimson of murder and life imprisonment without parole. But I actually think he got life imprisonment with a minimum of 26 years before he could actually apply for parole. Judge Adele Williams said that Stimson was a highly dangerous young man who posed a very high considerable risk to women in the future. She also said that he was cruel, calculated and cowardly in his act. And this was an act of wickedness. You were determined to punish her for ending the relationship with you and you seeked revenge. July 10th, 2018. There was a graduation ceremony hosted for Molly's year. Two special guests were invited. They accepted Molly's graduation award on Molly's behalf. This was Molly's mum and dad. As Molly's mum and dad turned around, the whole place screamed and clapped. It was such an emotional time. They were all cheering as though Molly was there getting her award. Now Molly's mum and friends actually created a charity for people suffering from an eating disorder and called it the Molly McLaren Foundation. Every year they celebrate Molly's birthday by hosting a charity fest called Molly Fest. Online stalking and cyber stalking, two women every week are murdered by partners or ex-partners. The behaviour of stalking is identified in 94% of the cases. I don't know if that's the same. I'll leave the links below for everything that we've talked about. And thank you so much for listening today. I will be back again on Thursday with another episode. Take care, everyone, and I will see you soon. Go to jail for things.